welcome to Hyper Production TV. In this episode, we're going to be looking at how to record MIDI and audio. So we're going to get straight into it. We're going to open up Logic here. I've already had it opened. So obviously, when you press File and New, it's going to ask you what kind of channel strip you want. So I'm going to click on Software Instrument because we're going to be recording a few MIDI bits today. So, like in the previous tutorials, you click on instruments, and for this sake, we are going to open up the EXS24 sampler in stereo. Now, when you just first play, it's just going to come up with a single, well, basically a simple sine wave. If you go in here and you go in factory, it's going to give you a bunch of presets that you can play with. So, for the sake of this, we're just going to use a classical piano. Okay, so then we're just going to click off that just so we can see what we're doing in the window. If you close that, it doesn't mean that the sound's going to go away. It's just for the sake of uh, of your workspace so you can see what you're doing. Okay, now the record. there's a few different options that you can have when you're recording. You can either just go straight into it without accounting, but more times than, sorry, more often than not, you normally want like accounting. So one, two, three, four, you know, quite a traditional way of doing it. And the way you do that to get accounting is you click this one, two, three, four button here. And if you hover over it, it says counting. Um, to get the click actually to work, you will have to click that one there as well. Now that will click in throughout the whole time you're recording, which I find quite useful anyway, especially if you're just laying down something without drums in the first place. So you've got, you know, just gives you, gets you timing better pretty much. So, and then all we do is press record and it's going to give us a one bar counting. We are running at 120 beats per minute. So you can either go, if you click that middle one there, you can either go up or down. If you click at the end one, it will just sort of do the, the single digit. So sort of beats per minute going up and down there, all right? So we'll just do 120 because that's the one that's stuck on. Now, if you want to do a loop, like we mentioned in the last tutorial, we just click that and then that will, you can either click that or if you've got the bars sort of highlighted, when you click it, it automatically switches it on. But say if you did click it off, but you want to keep the bars that they're the same, you just click that and it'll switch it on. Or alternatively, I'll just find it easier just to use that. Okay, so we're just going to play a short little snippet and then we're going to play our keys and then it's going to punch in what keys we've pressed from the MIDI keyboard onto the DAW. So here we go. Okay, now when it looped, it, it wasn't going to play the next one because I'll probably just press it in a bit too early. So we're going to double click that, which opens up your piano roll. Now you're going to be finding yourself using the piano roll quite a lot because this is where you do your finite editing um, just to make sure that everything is uh, everything's working. Now another term that I'm going to say to you is quantizing or quantization. I think that's how you say it anyway, I'm not too sure. Um, so yeah, quantizing. This is an automatic sort of script within Logic that automatically puts all the notes in time for you. Now it sounds like you're cheating, but I mean, just I couldn't really care what other people say to be honest. So it's, it's just a way of getting a tight groove onto there. I mean, I'm sure if you're recording pianos, it's, it's a bit different, especially with electronic music where everything's sort of sounds a little bit better when it's tighter. In my opinion, I mean, some people like that sort of rawish sound, but it's very useful this tool. Uh, you don't have to use it, but if you want to tidy up your MIDI notes, so as we drag over, it is going to make a noise just so you can tell what notes you're uh, what notes you, you're pressing you can switch that off by selecting this little button up here that's green which is MIDI out so if you take that off oh we've got no sound so if you switch it back on boom we've got it okay cool now the way to do quantizing is pretty simple if we look over here where it says time quantize I'm guessing that's it so I'm not guessing I do know I'm just joking so we'll kick on what kind of sort of quantizing we want in this case we're going to use 1 16th notes only because if you see here and here we've got not on the whole beat we've got it on the 16th and it will just bring it back to the shortest one when I played it I wasn't that far out so it's not going to uh, I mean if you do it on a couple of the say for example if we put it on one second and then quantize oh sorry one eighth no, it's not going to do that there either 
Uh, there we go. Yeah, so we'll just leave it one sixteenth. That's pretty much the only one that you really need anyway. So, but if you want to do all of them at the same time, you highlight all of them. And you'll get that sort of weird sound if you've got a few keys going on. So then you click that. Boom! All in time. So then when we play it... There we have the most beautiful, amazing... Well, it's not really that beautiful, not amazing, but there you go. There's your, there's your sort of sounds. That, uh, so it's all quantized, sound nice and tight. And especially when you go to put in drums as well, it's going to sound nice and punchy. It's going to sound quite... But some people would argue whether it sounds quite rigid or not, or whether it sounds too robotic. Just make what you... Here's the tool to do that. If you want to use it or not, well, that's up to you. You don't have to, but if you want to, I've just shown you. So... There you go. Okay. So, we're going to move on to now to look at our note velocity. Now, what note velocity is, I'm going to press my key really softly. So that is hitting, basically throughout MIDI, uh, You obviously, if you've got a sort of velocity sensitive keyboard, the harder you hit it, like a, a real piano, the louder it's going to be. So I'm just going to start off slow and then go up to hard. Okay. Now, this is reflected as a colour coding on your MIDI regions. And what a MIDI region is, is these little bits here. They're your MIDI regions, okay? Or your, your MIDI notes, sorry. And th so this is the MIDI region, and these are the MIDI notes. So it's the colour coding via MIDI notes, which are here. Now, the way you go and edit it, those, is this little button here. So if you click on that, and there we have all the different velocities going from zero and the velocity numbers or any sort of MIDI number recognition goes from zero to one two seven I don't know why it's one two seven maybe google it that's my best advice I'm sorry if it doesn't work out for you I'll write your letter saying sorry so if we just write it goes on from there to there um, so as you can say we're hitting in between about 60 and 80 are the points that we're hitting now you can either individually go in there and drag them up so for this note, I think it's this one here. Yeah. So if you highlight that, it's going to highlight the one associating to that particular MIDI note. So if I drag that up, the colour is going to change. So red is going to be like the highest one. And like a, I think it goes down to a yellow, which is quite weak. I think. Anyway, let's just test it. So that's the lowest. Oh, it goes to blue. That's it. Okay, so if we highlight that again. So that's going to be really, really weak. Go up. And then it's going to go up to red, which is like, Danger! Don't play too loud! in sort of an Arnold Schwarzenegger type accent. So, <clears throat> it, the way we can do that, if you want to do all of them the same, if you click in an empty space at the end here, click and hold, it's going to say end line, position. And if we drag that across, it's going to give you a line. And then you let, and then you come across there, so that it's covering all the notes. And then when I let go, they're all going to snap to the same velocity. Boom, there we go. So they're all the same velocity. So now, the dynamics of it are all the same. Okay, so if you want to see more of your piano roll window, you just click this little button up here, takes it away. And also, if you want to take the metronome off while it's playing, just unclick that button, that button just up here. Okay, so that one, on, off, on, off, you get the picture. Go. All right, okay, cool, so we've got that sorted. So that's your basic MIDI and recording MIDI. So that's how you tidy up, that's how you record, that's how you tidy things up. I mean, what you can do as well, if you want to do the length of the notes, say if you're using like a string and you don't want that little gap at the end of it and you just want it to go straight into the other notes. So, so let's just quickly, I'm going to shut down this piano roll window here, which is where these scissors are. I don't know why it's scissors. Maybe they like scissors. Is that how you edit stuff? I don't, whatever. So just click that, gets it away. Okay, so we're going to pick a different sound. So we're going to double click in the middle here and it's going to open up the EXS24. So then we're going to go back down to factory sounds and then we're going to click on orchestral and strings. Now for this one, we're going to pick, this should be sort of like a, I'll oh, just click strings. Oh, string ensemble. There we go. So that's just like your big string ensemble. So we're going to play that. We're going to play the MIDI note now. Okay, so you can hear that gap that's in between. So we're going to double click that again, so open up the MIDI region. Now, you can pick individually and then drag the notes there. If you've got it clicked on smart here, Logic is pretty smart. Probably not as smart as Einstein, although maybe, I don't know. They didn't have um, 
logic back then but maybe you're smart as Einstein don't know so anyway so if you click that it's going to snap to it automatically you can change different ones here which we'll talk about in another tutorial but for the sake of this one so that one's just snapped to there you can see it's sort of just just like snapping snapping to it there if you highlight all of them and drag them it will pull like the longest one to that point but you want all the other ones don't you I could tell so what we're going to do we're going to hold option key shift click just wobble it around <gasps> they've all snapped to the same point gonna drag it to the end let go and there we have our perfectly quantized ending part of the note of the midi note so we do that to all of them give it a shake hold alt and shift boom done it again we are f cooking on gas so here we go so on this bit let go there we are so we're just dragging all the ones over here cool so we're just going to keep doing it. Now, sometimes if they're the same length, or you want them the same length, if you highlight a few of them and then do that, it's going to do all of them. See there? Bang. God, this is so time efficient. Because we all know we need to get that track out. The A&R scout of Warner Brother is, or Warner Music is, is desperate for this track, and you've, I've just made it so more streamlined for you. So here we go. Oh, yes. There you go. So that's pretty much all you need um, to, you know, sort of gather the, the basics of MIDI recording. Now, there is a lot more that you can do with MIDI, which we will cover in, in other videos as well, because there is a load of stuff that you can that you can sort of learn about MIDI and that you can affect as well. As you can see, here, just a little preview where it says MIDI effects. Oh, we're looking at another one. We'll go really in depth with that one, I promise. And then we'll, uh, we'll have a little bit. It's just not. It's not run before we can walk so we're going to click off that we're going to delete that now uh and then we're going to delete this and we're going to open up just record some midi okay uh, sorry record some audio so we're going to close that down and obviously logic doesn't like to have it closed so we're going to open up that one again like i said in the last tutorial it's going to come up with my microphone because that's how i'm recording this tutorial so create and there's my lovely voice so as we've got a microphone plugged in already it makes sense to probably just record my voice so let's do it so i'm gonna hit record oh sorry gonna hit the metronome and then i'm just gonna just sing well attempt to sing i'm just gonna sing so like some scatty stuff you ready Woo. <clears throat> i know what you're thinking why don't i go on x factor which i probably will but for now i'm just gonna stick making these tutorials for you guys so here we go so I'm gonna I'm gonna just select the input, no input for now, because I don't want my voice coming through anymore. So I'm gonna select that. So there we go. But now Alright. So <clears throat> we're gonna click here, it's audio effects, and maybe just put oh sorry, EQ. We'll tap EQ and then because you, you've just recorded that hot new lick, the hot top line, and you want to get straight away editing that. So one of the most common things you go to is an EQ, just to like filter out a few of those horrible frequencies. I would like to just delete the whole thing, because it's I would look rather like a sort of nice singing vocal, but we haven't got that, so that's fine. So here we go. Analyzer on. There we go. So there are your basics recording audio and MIDI. So that is the basics that you need to get physically starting music, or oh, sorry, start making music and get your sound coming out your speakers of something that you've created. That's the end of this tutorial for now. Please subscribe to the channel and any questions that you have, leave a comment in the section below. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.